Which of these teams has the better quarterback? Is it Michigan's J.J. McCarthy or is it Jalen Milrow benched after their second game and a loss to Texas earlier in the year? Got the job back a week later after his backup, of course, didn't get the job done himself. He's come on last five, six weeks. Hail Mary to beat Auburn and then got the job done against number one Georgia. Let me know who you guys think who the better QB is. We're going to break that down in a second. But I'll ask you guys this question in the live chat or in the comments if you're watching it on demand as this video will go up on Saturday. Are you headed to Pasadena for the Rose Bowl? By the time this goes up on the channel, I'll be about uh, 12 hours, 13 hours away from heading up north, two-hour drive from San Diego to um to the Santa Monica so I can go to the Rose Bowl heading up on Sunday. Game is, of course, on Monday. Let me know if you head there. Give me a Y for yes or an N for no. <music> Quarterback matchup might be what decides this game. J.J. McCarthy has been the more accurate quarterback, but maybe not as of late, maybe not downfield. Uh, I think some of those reasons could go into – the fact that Michigan's you know route trees aren't that uh, you know elaborate by any means. JJ McCarthy has been battling knee and ankle injuries from the Purdue game through the Penn State game and beyond Maryland, Ohio State, and Iowa. And Jalen Milrow, you know, give him credit; he has gotten progressively better. They found a system that has worked for him to uh, do what he does best, which is kind of one read short or long, or just take off running for Nick Saban's Alabama team that beat the number one team in the country and has a chance to beat the number one team in the country in back to back games, George and the SEC title game, and then, of course, Michigan coming up, which I don't think they're going to do, but that is what the stakes are. My ask and my prediction for Michigan to win this game is run, JJ, run. I think Michigan's better, the better team, uh, but the part of that thinking is not just uh, you know dropping back five-step drops and throwing the ball downfield or handing off to play quorum. It is what we've seen all year this year last year from J.J. McCarthy, making plays on his feet with rolling out, hitting the guy down the sideline, scrambling, or, I mean, throwing it across the field, almost getting the ball intercepted, catching people off guard against Ohio State, or just, whoop, take it off and run 15 yards, 8 yards, 12 yards, maybe even more. Who has the better quarterback in this team? I think it could be as simple as that in a lot of ways, but it comes down to the third quarter, comes down to the fourth quarter. You got to get a score to win the game. You got to keep a drive alive to hold on to that lead, like Michigan did against Ohio State, of course, uh, with Probably just as much talent on the defensive side of the ball. He's got a high school recruiting as Alabama. J.J. McCarthy, for me, is the guy that can get it done. Quick ask for you guys, if you've yet to do so, subscribe to the channel. Um, we're going to add in this year strong. We're going to make sure that we are bringing our full force of a Michigan football report fan base on this channel and to every show we can into this Alabama game and have the most people watch in the post game. So subscribe to the channel if you've yet to do so. Put those notes on as well. Uh, you get our post game video the second I get sell signal walking out of the Rose Bowl after Michigan beats Alabama. I'm just going to pop my phone and go live on YouTube. Jalen Milrow running. And this stat's kind of crazy. 693 positive rushing yards so far this year. So it's not actually his stat count because he's had negative ones that comes off in college. But of the 693 positive rushing yards he's had this year, 479 of them have come on scrambles, which means that of the remaining 214 positive rushing yards, only 214 of those came on design quarterback run. You see a guy with almost 700 positive rushing yards for the year. Um, you think, wow, this guy can scramble. This guy can run. They must be doing a lot of things, read options, all this. No, it's not that. 75-80% of his rushing yards are coming on scrambles. It's a design pass. You're short, covered, long, covered. Okay, I'm just going to boop, 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 take off running. And um, that's what Michigan's got to stop. And it's different than probably any quarterback they have faced this season. So let's take a look at the, some players in Alabama who might be nicked up a little bit in this game. So Jace McClellan. Um, Miss starting running back for the season for uh, Crimson Tide. He was a five-star recruit about three, three and a half, four years ago. Uh, missed the, the SEC title game with a foot injury, but rumors are that it could be a game-time decision. We talked to our insider, Chris Dortry, Dotry, not the singer, but uh, Chat Sports own Alabama Football Report. He said, he's going to be fine. He's going to play. We shall see. Didn't play in their last game. Kool-Aid McKinstry, maybe the best player on this Alabama roster. They're starting cornerback. Going to be a top 15 pick in the NFL draft. He left the Georgia game with a concussion in the third quarter. Did not return. Um, also, Chris said, hey, he's going to be okay. He's going to be fine. But we'll see, right? Concussions aren't something that always uh, happen. If he gets, yeah, you know, I'm not saying I want him to be injured or anything, but it could be one of those things that he does play. First time he takes a hit from Blake Corum coming around the edge or something like that, boom, he's knocked up. Uh, you know, his head's ringing a little bit again. They take him out of the game. So keep an eye out for starting running back, starting cornerback. Uh, not saying their best two players, although I think Cooley probably is their best, but those are two players that Alabama absolutely needs 
to win this game. But let's go inside Michigan's game plan, tell you what I'm feeling about uh, what we've heard from practice over the last 10 days and what Michigan's going to prepare for coming up against Alabama for Monday afternoon's game. I will ask this question for you, though. I want to hear your take on Colson Loveland, because for me, he's the X factor. Will he have against Alabama 75 receiving yards? I'm putting the number at. Will he have more than that or less? Now, conventional wisdom says less because he really hasn't had breakout huge games like that outside of what Purdue, maybe one other one this year so far. Let me know in the comments. I put the number there in a second because that's kind of where I think he's going to get. I think he's going to have six catches, 75 yards. And so I put my money where my mouth is with Prize Picks, the sponsor of today's show. Go down and answer that question in the comments or in the live chat while I tell you about Prize Picks. This week on Prize Picks, I am making all my picks be Michigan, Alabama, Rose Bowl related. I'll show you theirs here in a second. Because Prize Picks is daily fantasy made easy. You just pick two, three, four, five, or six players. And all you do is choose more or less on the stats that Prize Picks put in front of you. So when I checked it, I saw these stats on Alabama, on Michigan's top players. JJ McCarthy, I don't know what he's gonna do passing, but I know. I know for a fact he's going to get more than 16 and a half rushing yards if I chose more. Jalen Milrow, I do think he's going to get more. Even though Michigan's going to spy him, he's going to get more than 32 and a half rushing yards on Michigan's defense because that might be all they have in their offense. How about Colson Loveland? I said 75 rushing yard, receiving yards, more or less. Price Picks says it's 36 and a half. That was an easy more for me. Blake Corum was a not so easy, less of 71 and a half rushing yards. And I think Michigan secondary will not allow the Alabama have big plays downfield. So I'm going less for the top receiver, Jermaine Burden. Put 25 bucks. I have 25 bucks in my account after I cashed out some wings. If I get that, win 10 times my money. See how easy it is? Just make more or less. On five players, I think I have a good insight into what they're going to do in this game. If I get all five right, 250 bucks. If I don't get all five right, right? Let's just say I only get four or even three right. I get twice my money back. So 25 bucks, I get 50 back. If I get four of the right, I only get three out of the five right. So three and two, I'm still getting 10 bucks back, 0.4 of my $25. That's how easy, easy it is with prize picks. I love it. I've been playing it all season long. Prizepicks.com slash CLNS. Prizepicks.com slash CLNS. The link is in the comments. It's down in the description. It is in the live chat. You use promo code uh, CLNS to get up to a hundred dollar deposit match. Up to a one hundred dollar deposit match. Get going. If you haven't done it yet with Price Picks, use that code. Get your bonus money deposit match and put a Price Picks on the table for the Michigan Alabama Rose Bowl, just like I showed you right there. I can win up to ten times my money. pricepickscom CLNS. The difference maker in this game. Why I talked to him about him with my question to you guys: seventy-five yards over or more or less is. Colston Loveland, right? I think he's being counted on from what I've heard in practice to break out as a superstar against Alabama. This is the game where, you know, college football, if it all works out well that Michigan's hoping for, college football takes notice and said, who the hell is that number 18, that sophomore that scored a touchdown against Ohio State, that number 18 tight end for Michigan that just absolutely tore apart the Alabama secondary. It was a mismatch against their safeties. It was a mismatch mismatch against their linebackers. And that's Colson Loveland. He is being a big part of what Michigan's going to do against Alabama. And I haven't put this question at the bottom of the screen you see there. The third bullet point, can Jim Harbaugh rekindle his Stanford and 49ers fight and magic, which I'll show you in a second. Now, Loveland's not absolutely tearing up this year. 572 yards, good numbers, 40 catches, good numbers for a tight end, but not All-American yet. Not first team undisputed all-conference as such. It's a big game against Alabama, another one national title game. Could get up there about 54, 55 catches, you know, 800 or so yards, a couple more touchdowns. We shall see. So that is the focus. Michigan understands that um, Terry and Arnold, Kool-Aid McKinstry, tough to pass on, right? Where can they have an advantage? And where is Harbaugh maybe the tight end whisperer or the you know, whisperer of a position? They call him the quarterback whisperer. I think he is the tight end whisperer. Go to your computers right now. Uh, stop! Don't stop watching this video. If you want to pause this, whatever you want to do, just go to YouTube. Type in Virginia Tech Stanford. It was the two, January 1st, 2011, so 2011 Orange Bowl, end of the 2010 season. Watch what Jim Harbaugh did with a player who I think is less talented than Colson Loveland, Kobe Fleener. The downfield routes, the staying in the block, releasing downfield, touchdown, big play, touchdown, big play. Absolutely tore Virginia Tech's uh, defense apart in the second half. Six catches, 173 yards, and a long three touchdowns, a long of 58. Tight end whisperer, not crazy to think about because it just didn't happen in college, right? It's happened in you know college with Fleener, of course, and then obviously Jake Butts, Colson Loveland, others at Michigan. 
but it's happening in the pros, right? One of the best performances we've seen by a tight end in the postseason, at least in the time, a year later, right? The 2011 second round NFC playoffs versus the New Orleans Saints. Remember this catch, right? Right at the goal line, uh, kind of called the catch two in, in San Francisco to beat uh, the Saints in uh, a 49ers home game to go on to the NFC Championship game, which they lost to the Giants. Seven catches, 180 yards, two touchdowns. You pair that with the Colin Kaepernick playbook that we showed you last week. Jim Harbaugh has shown quarterbacks and tight ends can make plays if they play. They have put the playbook and the, uh, the game call of planning into effect that will obviously allow them to have big plays. Now, another guy that we want to consider as an unsung hero is A.J. Barner, right? Alabama's not just going to let one player like uh, Colson Loveland just go catches, 50-yard catches, 30-yard catches, 20-yard catches, nonstop. So when they cue in on him, put a second tight end in, right? Make him think you're run blocking for Diamond Edwards, Blake Corum. Have one guy release and go deep, other guy stay blocked, go out there, get A.J. Barner. We've only saw one or two games this year, Purdue game most notably, where these two guys were an absolute force down the field. J.J. McCarthy trusts them. He trusts them in the red zone. And I don't know if Jim Harbaugh really trusts J.J. McCarthy throwing as much in the red zone. If he does, I probably think it's going to be to one of those two players, if not uh, Diamond Edwards, a.k.a. the Don. So Harbaugh, Titan Whisperer, those two guys. If neither one of those guys has a big game, I still think Michigan's going to win, but I think they will. And from what I've been told, Michigan has been game planning to make sure you take advantage of your strength tight end running back on the backfield against Alabama's weakest point on their defense, which is probably right up the middle, right? Uh, middle linebackers, both safety positions. Uh, we'll see if it plays out on Monday night. I'm headed to SoCal. So uh, if you guys want to play along virtually with me, you know, kind of follow the trip. I'll put pictures out. I'll put videos. If we hear anything, I'll put, you know, a little selfie video like I do with a halftime show on Twitter. So if you have to do so, follow me. Join my six and a half days in Southern California. It's at James Yoder on Twitter. Um, you know, join along. Let me know what you guys are feeling. I'll, I'll Maybe I'll follow back the next four or five people who uh, follow me at James Yoder on Twitter. Let's look at the, uh, the TV ratings for college football games over the last couple of days. And I started thinking to myself, could this be the most watched college football game of all time? Think about the intrigue we've got going on here, right? You've got Alabama, Nick Saban, greatest coach of all time, number four, the Rose Bowl, the last real Rose Bowl of this kind of, you know, college football era. The last uh, 14 playoff, Jim Harbaugh, right? I mean, who's a bigger name in football than Jim Harbaugh? Who draws more eyeballs than Jim Harbaugh? And maybe the two premier programs in the sport right now over the past three, four years, I know Georgia's won two national titles. I just don't think they have that cachet. It's like Ohio State, Michigan, Alabama, Notre Dame. These are the type of programs that can draw record-setting in the amount of eyes um, throughout college football. So I thought to myself, all those factors going into it, the game's on New Year's Day, not New Year's Eve, which has poor ratings typically, um, this could be potentially the greatest, uh, the most watched game in the history of college football. Now, if you saw Michigan Ohio State, you know that was the most watched game, uh, regular season game. This one, this past, you know, a couple weeks ago, a month ago, that was the most watched game in college football in the regular season since Alabama LSU one versus two in 2011. So. Not crazy to think about. And a lot of the games that we're going to show you here coming up in a second as most college football watch games ever and most watch games in the college football playoff era, a lot of them have either Ohio State or even Alabama add Michigan to that you know, for a to, to replace out Ohio State. You've got yourself a hell of a recipe. We're good to go, Jack. Show the people the games. All right, here's the most watched games ever in the history of college football as they've been doing modern TVs. Now, some people are saying, oh, wow, there was a game back in 1971. Et cetera, et cetera. These are from, I think it's 1988 on, when they've done like this, the, the, the modern TV ratings. So 35 years. Uh, USC, Texas, obviously no brainer. Uh, one versus two. There's so many stars Reggie Bush, Matt Liner, Vince Young, et cetera. Phenomenal game. Came out in the last couple plays, last drive. 36.6 million. Now, this one surprised me. First college football playoff game. Ohio State versus a non-traditional power in Oregon. I think it was more of the, hey, this is new. This is fresh. We've never had this before. First college football playoff national title game. That's the second most watched game ever, 34.1 million. Now, Texas, Alabama, uh, we talked about that game uh, a little earlier on in the uh, the live show, 30.8. Uh, but you see the, the theme there, Alabama, right? Ohio State above them. So Texas, two of the top three. USC Northwestern. This is surprising. Jack, you probably don't remember this. This Northwestern team was like their ultimate Cinderella story. Went from like three wins in 2094 to a win the Big Ten in 1995, including beating Michigan. Um, USC Northwestern in that Rose Bowl. I think it was Northwestern's first ever Rose Bowl, 30.4. But what's the factor there? The Rose Bowl, right? The Rose Bowl. USC Texas, 
the Rose Bowl. Uh, Texas Alabama could have been the Rose Bowl as well. I don't remember off the top of my head. Was it the Rose Bowl? No, I can't remember. Um, so, uh, and then Alabama, Miami, way back in 1992. So all the factors again there. You have at least two Rose Bowls: USC, Texas, and USC Northwestern. Then you've got multiple Alabamas. Then you've got you know Ohio State in there. It's there. The only one that doesn't really uh, you know jump in there. Actually, I guess they all kind of do in some regards. Uh, play into this narrative. It's USC, Texas, Rose Bowl, Ohio State, right? Michigan's counterpart, Alabama, Rose Bowl, Alabama. It was a Rose Bowl. So three of these top five are Rose Bowls at Texas, Alabama, USC, Northwestern, and USC, Texas. Uh, and the other one, Alabama, Miami, has, uh, has there. So that is the most watched ever game. I think this one's going to rival it. I think it's going to get up in this top five. I'm not sure if it's going to get all the way to number one. I'll show you the, the highest rated uh, games in college football playoff era here in a moment, but I gotta ask you this question: What are you feeling for uh, for Monday? Are you feeling all blues? Are you feeling traditional uniforms? Are you feeling all maize? Let me see with a one, two, or three in the comments. Let me know how you guys are feeling on this Michigan football Alabama uniform matchup. Michigan's number one seed; they get to pick which uniforms they uh, want. They could wear the all whites. They could wear you know white jerseys. They won't, but uh, they could. I think they're gonna end up going with the traditionals. I think they're gonna have. Uh, you know, I'd love to see them with the Rose Bowl patches, which they used to do in the 90s. They were absolutely beautiful, if you don't, guys don't remember that. Um, but uh, I don't think they're going to do that, but I think they will wear the traditionals. So could this be a record-setting game? What if it does get up to the top one, USC, Texas, Oregon, Ohio State? Now, if it's Michigan, Texas, that could be, that could be up there with that USC, Texas game too, right? Uh, we'll see how that were to shake out. But could it be the most watched college football playoff semifinal game ever? We've got five in this the prior nine years. Um, this is the tenth year of the four-team CFP. Number one, actually, again, Ohio State Alabama. Right? Does that not remind you kind of what we've got going on here? Now, this was the primetime game in that first uh, January first, two thousand fifteen, the two thousand fourteen season. But kind of went back there. I think it was anomaly that two thousand fourteen season because it's the first time it ever happened. Right? So you get more people. That Oregon Florida State audience kind of bled right into the Alabama primetime game. Oregon Florida State Rose Bowl number one game. Ohio State, Alabama, right? So you kind of see the theme here. Then you got George, Oklahoma. Huh, where was that game played at, Jack? That was the Rose Bowl. You remember that one? Georgia, uh, Oklahoma, Baker Mayfield. Can, you know, 52, 51, whatever it was, 55, 52. Absolutely epic game. Uh, Georgia went on, almost beat Alabama, lost to Alabama in the title game. Georgia, Ohio State. So you got a a a SEC power, Ohio State, Big Ten power. And last year, Michigan TCU, right? I'm not surprised that one was even on there. All these factors have in. They've either got... Rose Bowl, they've either got Alabama, they've either got Ohio State, or Michigan. I just so many factors, and then you add all up. So if I were to say, how would I deliver the biggest audience in the history of the college football playoff semifinal in the last year? I'd say, give me Jim Harbaugh. After he got suspended six out of Michigan's 13 games so far. Give me Nick Saban. Maybe a point or two underdog to, to Jim Harbaugh. Let's make it at the Rose Bowl, baby, where it seems all the big games, because your average your grandma wants to watch the Rose Bowl, because she watched it as a kid, and... Um, you know, make it uh, at 2 o'clock uh, Pacific time, 5 o'clock Eastern on New Year's Day. Michigan number one team in the country. I think you've got Jim Harbaugh, Nick Saban, every re recipe. If Michigan does not get in that top one or two in Alabama for this game, I will be disappointed in you, the college football viewing audience. All 28.31 million of you that Michigan would need uh, in Alabama to get that uh, record in this game. Let me know where you guys are watching the game from. I'll be heading out to... Uh, to the game, um, gonna go with wife and go with my seven-year-old son. Uh, you know, he's been part of this. He just became obsessed with Donovan Edwards over the last year after the Ohio State game, and so uh, we got it for him for a Christmas present. Uh, where are you watching? You're gonna be on the couch. You're gonna be over on the couch, the couch at home, right? You're hosting. You go into a friend's house. You go into the bar, or you're going to the game. Give me a C, an F, a B, or Give me an R if you're going to the game. Let's chant it all together right now. Chant it with me wherever you are right now. I don't care if you're around people, you're listening to your AirPods, you're at home by yourself. Stand up if you're sitting. Just chant it with me. Let's go blue. Let's go blue. Let's go blue. Let's go blue. I can't wait. Michigan, Alabama, Monday, 5 o'clock Eastern. Michigan's going to get the win. On to the national title game. Let's go blue.